Klaus Fischer is one of the most ambitious artists of his generation. The reason that's so is because of the way he understands space. Space is a material. It's a material in its own right, and Urs understands the power of that material and how to use it to very dramatic sculptural effect. I think Urs is an important artist because he's one of the most fearless artists working today, both in terms of his approach to the materials and uh, his approach to venues and his approach to his own, his own work. Uh, he uh, will do anything to get the job done. Everything is possible, everything is open. What makes it impossible is you yourself as an artist. But well, the great thing in art is your limitations, is your, uh, <laughs> is your surface, you know, so it's kind of good. sculptor in no uncertain terms. He uses physical materials and he also makes very large-scale uh, objects. He really uh, deals with matter, volume, size, surface, color, very formal things. There is this saying when you say like what the frame is, it's like the, the translator, the interpreter <laughs> between the, the the you know between the work and the wall or the room. So usually it's like uh, the frame is done in a manner of the room. This the idea is to make it uh, the frame belongs to the drawing rather than the frame belongs to the room. Fischer is a Swiss artist based in New York. We decided to invite us with these two pieces. One piece is these two holes, which open up the space into a series of vistas that open up the entire exhibition. And the other piece is this piece here, which is two branches cast in um, aluminum. And then there's a candle, as you can see, on the top of each one, and they're motorized. So they both move very, very slowly around the space, and they delineate these concentric circles because the wax drips. When people come into the Whitney and see Urs's sculptures here, they visibly slow down and look. This piece behind me is a very, very beautiful piece. It's a time-based sculpture, and it calms you down. When you're looking at time literally being marked as the branches move around, it brings you back down to the passing of each moment. And people gather around it and silently watch it. It's, uh, again, as in all Urs's work, profoundly physical and material, but that material is in transit. It's almost alchemical, it's transformative, it's turning from one thing into another. You see something unfold as each day of the exhibition proceeds. I don't think Burroughs sees making art as a lonely enterprise. I've not known another artist that has uh, quite so many assistants working around them, and, and I think it's assistant isn't quite the word to use. I think there are people he relies on. Yeah, I'm the uh, parts model for this. Show it, man. Yeah, Show yes, your hair. Yeah. You know, where it's, it's gone. It's Show life. your, your it's missing all patch. Over here. It was all very painful. He knows exactly what he wants to do, but I think the process is, uh, well, not a group effort, but I think he, he likes a lot of people around. It's boring to do stuff alone. I mean, I, I don't know, wow, what for? There's nothing to prove there, in a way. I mean, you know, like, I can do all this stuff. Eh? It's just nice to hang out. Right? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, oh, my 
right foot. First of all, it's just a little. Is that anatomically correct, Eugene? Is that what you're about? This, this is exactly <laughs> how, I have a hard time finding socks. <laughs> this is like how the cast was, and then we define the heights and the, the angles for this friend of mine who builds the mechanism. So he can take like precise measurements and stuff. Okay. And then we build this stuff and then we, we put these things over it, you know, over the mechanism. It extends beyond the making of the work, I think. That it's a way of producing a fertile environment. Urs is preparing a show at the Boymans. The Boymans Museum, it's certainly one of the most important uh, contemporary spaces, uh, modern art spaces in Holland and in Europe. And he's shown me some of the preparatory models for the exhibition. One could say that's a person. It's like to hear. Oh, that's the scale? Yeah, that's the scale. And it's going to be a, a desktop lamp that actually works. So like the light is on in the night too. He's planning on putting mirrors around all of the walls and using those mirrors to create a different kind of space around some of these sculptural objects. That's the model of this room. It consists out of three rooms that are open. Well, this idea I had from before, that I want to mirror a big room. So it's not actually a reaction to this space. It is something I wanted to do. The weird mirrors is not really a work. It's just that... It's a, it's a display, you know, it's like a, it's a way to display or contextualize your work, you know. If you have something in the corner, you know, like if you really just look over this, this angle, you know, you can sort of guess how it will look. If it turns out good, I'm happy, you know, otherwise it's, it's a lot of effort and uh, resources for, I'm not happy with <laughs> I started to know who was Fischer like about 10 years ago and for me he's a very let's say very creative artist of course every artist is creative but Urs is a bit more creative than other artists hey Urs I'm talking about the way you tackle ideas and the way you you come up with creative ideas and the way you execute them in uh, in new works Urs places himself in the tradition of artists who deal with everyday reality people like Bruegel or Bosch also Rembrandt He's somebody who works with traditional themes. That's something you find in the in the bread house. Shall we turn it down and then hang it on? The stable is all kept in the loop. Wait, wait. Let me see if it's attached on this side. Yeah. Can you rock it a little bit? If you look at the material side of the work, it's, it's very interesting because it's like very down-to-earth materials in a way. Okay. Materials from everyday reality. The bread would be good with olive oil, don't you think? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a way, it's just lying around, but it's of course picked out on purpose. This bread is coming from a baker in Zurich, and then this bread is coming from here. From Rotterdam, from some bakery here. The hardest part is to get the bread. You know, when you glue the bread, it's kind of boring, but when you glue the bread, it shrinks. And when it shrinks, it can come off the glue, maybe. And now what we do is we put the foam in, because now it will not shrink in any way. So now we foam it, and then it there, it, these parts are like fixed now. This will stay the way they are. Now we are just finishing, the, the structure is this wood. Now we are trying to repair some pieces. 
and to give the final, how you say, cut to make uh, harmonies all together. Natural materials, you cannot dominate it, you know. Materials have their own way. You never know if it works, and uh, that's kind of the pleasure. You need to trust your skills. Just give it a little, like a few notches in it, mm -hmm. just like a tail, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little tick, 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 you know? That it stays straight up when it goes in the oven. Okay. So, do you think there's a uh, collective nature in the work? Okay. What do you think, Eugene? No way. <laughs> no way. He's the maestro. He's the maestro. Eugene doesn't have any vision. I, I, I'm very nearsighted. <laughs> <laughs> Dictatorship, yeah. Excuse me? It's a dictatorship? It's a, yeah, it's totalitarian. No, it's all over us. It's all over us. Yeah. It's Eugene's vision. It's Pete's vision. It's my vision. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Jesse's vision, you know. This sculpture doesn't have a name yet, but uh, everybody who works on calls it the lamp and the bear. The most interesting thing is that I cannot imagine how it will be, you know. Good. Whatever you make, it, it always looks different than what you imagine, you know. What we did here is uh, for Urs Fischer, we made the sculpture. What he gave us first was an original teddy bear and a, a lamp. Then a partner company of us did cut out everything out of styrofoam and we just glued it together, sprayed it with polyurethane. I did something with like half the size and volume before and it takes a really long time. In this case, I'm not interested in doing it myself. for this sculpture that has one moving leg and a still leg. And then there is a robot or some kind of mechanism, mechanical mechanism going inside. And then one leg is moving very fast as men's legs tend to do. Okay. Yeah, thanks. But uh, keep, keep going. All the mean parts. Because it hurts the most, you know, Eugene has told me payback. It's okay, I feel it, it's okay. I get it out. I don't understand why you have silicone and the dust. Because the silicon collapses, I mean, it's soft, you know, so you cannot make a form out of something that... Why don't you just make the plaster right on your skin? Uh, because you have no details whatsoever. It's like if you make a video or a film, you choose a certain look. So you choose a certain surface, a certain... So you like the coloring? This just shows every pore, everything, you know, like you really see. It's kind of comfortable once the plaster is on because then you don't have to hold your legs up or anything. <laughs> my founder if it was possible for them to finish things within this time frame and they said they can do it.
put this up here, which is the, uh, the other arm, the right arm. We're going to put that up and then we will try to bring up the head and the lamp. So uh, we hope that we're going to do that today. Is this part of the beer? Is it falling down at Monday? All these places we have to shut with silicone and color too. And, um, yeah, after it's finished, I think. Mm -hmm. There is more to do, like uh, the ear. Maybe we can bring the ear. And then, of course, there is a bulb, a light bulb. And then there's uh, electrical installations we have to do as well. The Friday afternoon is the opening, I think, 6 o'clock. Then it has to be ready. So we have another two days. Ich bin der Abbas, ich kann das Bein über da auch nicht laufen. Das wird noch mehr in den Weg da hin. Das ist das. Das ist das. Das ist das. Das Right. You think you get it over? Yeah. Now the problem is the ankle, huh? Yeah. The best thing is if you go a little further down now with the with the thing, just go to down here. Yeah. Roll it up and then I try to get the foot out. That's okay. how we do it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go down. <laughs> it's hard. A lot of strength. Eugene? Yeah. Somebody has to lift this down yeah. from inside, underneath the foot, and where the, where the, where the, there, there down, and then I get out. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> I need to really get in. Jesus. Pull it, pull it, Freddy, pull it. Yeah, that's good. No, it's good. Just go. Go, go, go. Okay, we got it. We got it. <laughs> no, put on my head. Slowly. Excellent. Oh, much lighter. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> installation like this with all these mirrors in the imagination you can imagine the mirrors but maybe two three times but not so deep how they are going here you know they go like into a tunnel that's nice This is my favorite photo. This is this. soon but then uh, you know it's gonna be a long day the sheep here is a friend of mine who helps me with many things he also builds machines and mechanical parts this is a certain idea then we talk about it and figure out how to do it in the most simple way you can't tell how it's going to work out it's like an experiment, and sometimes it works out, and sometimes it doesn't. The leg was made 
here and the mechanics were done in, in Zurich and the problem is that it's it's getting too fat because the mechanics are not fitting into the lag properly. You see the lag is not looking the way it should so it's more distracting than helping the issue of the whipping lag. Always this finding out how to make it better and as soon as it's okay we, we show it and otherwise we don't. It's just not perfect yet. The motor sheep you brought is too big, so we won't use the leg in this show. Doing a bigger show like this, you have to have more options than you need on the end. In some sense, we just got rid of one option. The original idea was to have two moving sculptures that are kind of connected. One is the piece with the wig and the other one was the moving leg. Both of these sculptures deal with nervous behavior and it, it would have been nice to have it as a duo and that was the plan but I, I can live with one. You know. So tomorrow is the opening and we have to be finished then. Now we're gonna switch on the light for the first time and check if they work. Could you please, Karina, plug them in? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Martin? Ah, uh, sorry, okay. Yeah, I can't see anything happening. Hang on. And they open. Okay. Ah, uh, one. They work. Looks good. There is always this idea that an opening should make you happy as an artist. I don't know any artist that's happy on an opening. It can feel like work. It's just the point where you have to stop working on the stuff. It's kind of like a point on the end of a sentence and then you can start a new sentence. That's how an opening is, you know, it's just a, it's some kind of framage for whatever you do. I would say uh, a lot of people are very surprised. A lot of people from Rotterdam, they know those spaces. And all of a sudden, it's all those mirrors. It's some complete uh, illusionistic kind of play. And people don't expect that. So uh, I'm pretty happy about that. By using the mirrors, I put you in the show. You are visible looking at whatever you look at. Yourself in the mirror or the work. You, you are present in this room. The mirrors are the thing that tie the whole thing together. house is uh, the first attention point I would say I expect some uh, letter in the newspaper at some time where somebody is talking about the third world and waste etc well I think that my
my granny that she's really upset. She said that it's a waste of uh, food because she had, uh, well, she's a war child, you know? Yeah. All these old ladies that come here every opening, they got upset and they want to write a letter to the artist and to the museum director. Candles is of course something people get very uh, quiet about, very almost uh, introspective. It's an atmospheric piece. It's a good closure of the show. And at the beginning there's seduction. And later people start reflecting. But the seduction of the show is so big that the reflecting will come later. Satisfaction is not related to the size or of the piece or how much work it was to do it. It works or it doesn't. It pretty much sums it up. I mean, there is there is desires that there is like there is a desire that you can explain things or you can understand things or you get a specific thing out of an artwork. But on the end, you you don't know. I mean, there is there are certain things that are good, and that's. That's a good. That's a good thing about making art. It's that there, that there is always a chance that something could be really good.